Hi, I'm Lisa with Nurtured Foundation Doula and Newborn Care Services. We serve pregnant and postpartum women in the Cleveland and Toledo area. And Brianna and I decided that we were going to start some videos to help clients with some common questions and just people out there because we know you probably have the same questions. So first I want to introduce you to Brianna. Hi. <laughs> Brianna is an IBCLC, otherwise known as a lactation consultant, and also a pediatric sleep consultant um, here in the Cleveland area. And so we get a lot of questions about infant sleep and toddler sleep. So we're going to start a series called the Sleep Consultant Series, or Sleep Training Series, rather, um, just to answer some of those questions. So today we're going to start with Episode 1, The Basics. Um, just to kind of give you a little bit more background on Brianna and why she got into this, um, the first question we're going to ask is, how did you even become interested in sleep consulting? Well, um, I do get that question kind of a lot, as, as weird as that is, but um, basically from working with my breastfeeding uh, mm -hmm. clients. So, obviously I get a phone call from them, usually within the first couple of days postpartum, they're freaking out. Um, I do in-home visits with them, and I help them with any kind of breastfeeding issues that they're having. Um, and then, come to find out, like, Around four months later, they call me back and they're like, ah, now I need help with sleeping. My child will not sleep or they only sleep if mm -hmm. I'm holding them or rocking them or feeding them. So that's usually about the time that it happens for even before six, four to six months in, the, mm -hmm. in that time frame. Um, so that's what really got me thinking, okay, there's something going on here. I get this question all the time to, to help. So I just started do as much research as I could um, all about sleep, um, just normal infant sleep even. I mean, I, I learned you know, that through you know, my education and training with, with breastfeeding also, but this was, I was just you know, diving deeper into how I could help more with that specifically. Um, and that's when I found the Family Sleep Institute, and that's where I became certified mm -hmm. um, sleep consultant. All right, so that's how it happened. Okay, so for those of you that don't know, pairing a lactation consultant and a sleep consultant is not always a marriage made in heaven. So tell me, obviously you feel there can be a balance between sleep and breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you explain that balance? to clients? I mean, is breastfeeding an all or none thing when it comes to sleep training? Um, no, and I, I do literally say that all the time. It's, it's not all or nothing. Um, you don't have to sacrifice your sleep or even your baby's sleep just in order to breastfeed. Um, so it really can be, you know, a really happy, I don't even know, mesh of those two things. Like you don't have to be sleep deprived. To be, to be a breastfeeding, to be su successful at breastfeeding. Um, so I do say there is a, there is a happy balance that, that can be reached. You just really have to, um, I mean, just like anything, you have to work at it. Yeah. You kind of have to set up, you know, boundaries. You have to set up kind of a schedule somewhat. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I, I really do feel like there, you can have a balance between the two. It's, not, it's definitely not all or nothing. Okay. So with that being said, if you have a breastfeeding mom that is exclusively breastfeeding and is really worried about she needs her sleep and she's ready to, to get some full sleep but yet wants to make sure baby's getting enough, is there like a, a certain age or developmental milestone that lets you know that um, it's safe to completely night wean? Um, okay, so I get this question a lot also because um, they always want to know, usually when can we get this night thing under control? Mm -hmm. um, some moms are like, I literally wake up every hour with my child, I'm mm -hmm. feeding constantly every one, two hours throughout the night, and it's just, it's taking a toll on me, I have to work, you know, all these things. So we definitely want to work on that. Um, sleep is important for everyone. Uh, especially if you are a working mom and you have to go to work, you do you, you have to be able to function. So I understand. Um, I like to, or I always recommend um, having them talk to their pediatrician first, yeah. because we definitely want to get that okay. Um, I, I feel feel better about it, mm -hmm. and I just I want there to be, you know, no reason to not you know have that to happen. So. Yeah. 
Um, talk to them about it. Make sure your baby is, you know, growing appropriately, gaining weight appropriately, you know, meeting the milestones that she, you know, they're supposed to be meeting. And then, um, you know, your pediatrician will usually give your blessing, give her, give them your blessing to start sleep training or anything else. So I like to get that blessing. Okay. Um, just it lets me know that everything's good and you know we can move forward. So I do recommend doing that. But then I also let you know the parents know, especially if they're exclusively breastfeeding. Um, I want them to know that I I prefer to keep some feedings in at mm -hmm. night. We want to keep that milk supply up. We don't want to do anything to hinder that. Right. You know, cause especially if you're going back to work and you're already having the stress of that. You don't want to add that in there and then have something, God forbid, happen to your to your milk supply. So we definitely want to keep that safe. And um, but not only that, we want the baby to be happy as well right. and thriving and still. So I like to keep in at least one to three feedings, depending how young the baby mm -hmm. is. Um, Upwards of like nine months even. I mean, okay. you know, up until probably like nine months or anything like that, it might be just one feeding. But honestly, once you start, once they really start getting good sleep at night, they kind of themselves will just start to wean um, slowly that way. I mean, yeah. there's always, you know, a family that I work with that maybe wants to do it a little quicker, um, which I can do. I can work with that. Okay. Um, we just... I like to just pay attention and know how much the baby's getting kind of throughout the day. I like to make sure of that mm -hmm. just so we can make sure the baby's still getting enough and also keeping up with her milk supply and, and keeping that safe. Okay, so it sounds like it's very parent driven. Mm -hmm. So if they want to completely cut out, then you can show them how to wean down to, if it's safe, once right. they get permission from the, the pediatrician or they can make it a more manageable number, exactly. like one to two times a night. Cause right, and I think when when they hear that number, and they're like, okay, I can do one or two feedings. Right. right. I can do that, you know, or I can pump one or two times, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Once they, once you tell them that and they know that that's the plan moving forward, they can deal with that and they can plan accordingly, you know what I mean? When they're just like kind of no plan and they just like feel like they're up constantly doing all these things, it, it does get overwhelming, so I feel like having a plan really it really it helps them that's good to hear because I know when we hear sleep training a lot of time people assume that you're putting the baby to bed always at you know seven o'clock and they're getting up at seven in the morning and there's no flexibility and right. they have to sleep that entire time but you're telling us there are options and you can so many options rest feed <laughs> and sleep train and get the rest that you need um, and baby gets the rest that, that they need. So absolutely. Well, thank you, Brianna. This concludes episode one of our sleep training series. Tune in to episode two, where we're going to talk more about does baby have to cry for sleep training and age old question. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next time.